Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on YYC Business, brought to you today by Megapix Media. Joining me is Scott Crockett, who is Vice President of Communications and External Relations with the Business Council of Alberta. Thanks uh, for joining us today, Scott. Thank you for having me, Mario. Okay, well, we're going to talk about back to work and back to the office. And, uh, you know, with uh, September rolling around here, uh, geez, tomorrow, and, uh, and uh, you know, Labor Day weekend, uh, after Labor Day, uh, we can expect uh, uh, more, uh, you know, return to work, uh, especially downtown Calgary. What's that going to look like, uh, Scott? Well, what we're seeing is uh, some real consensus has been driven into the business community around uh, returning to the office for those who haven't already. You know, a lot of businesses have uh, already had at least a portion of their staff back in the office, but there's been lots of folks who, for one reason or another, often, uh, you know, an abundance of caution, have kept a portion of their staff or even most of their office staff uh, still working from home until this point. Uh, what we're seeing is in early September, particularly kind of just after Labor Day, uh, the vast majority of those who are still out of the office are reopening their offices at least at least partially and uh, and beginning to ease employees back into those spaces uh, for those that haven't already and and that's creating some interesting dynamics you know we're particularly seeing some conversations around the topic of the moment uh, vaccinations and also about what the future of the workplace is going to look like let's talk a, a, a little bit about a couple of those elements uh the first is the actual coming back to the office uh uh any thoughts on how that's uh, going to unfold? That uh, you know, we we hear a lot of uh, the talk about sort of the hybrid workplace now, where sometimes there are people working at home, and and then other days of the week they'll they'll work in the office. Um, then there's a lot of you know a lot of remote work that is going to stick around. Um, how do you think that's all going to unfold, especially for Calgary? Because Calgary is kind of unique in the sense that it's you know, downtown is a corporate, uh, you know, head offices for many, old patch, et cetera. Well, I think the, the reality is that nobody knows for sure how this is going to unfold in the, in the medium to long run, because uh, the book isn't written on what the future of the office is going to look like. But we do have some strong indications of what the short run is going to look like. And so for starters, I think a lot of businesses, a lot of them, Employers are finding that there's a, that there's maybe a little more work than they expected to be done with bringing their employees back to the office and ensuring everyone's comfortable. You know, change is always hard, even when it's a good change. And yeah. so, while lots of people want to go back to the office, they're they're needing to ease into it a little bit. You know, I sort of liken it to maybe if I've been working nights for the last year and a half and I got a new job on the day shift, that might be great for my life, but it'd still be a pretty major adjustment to move from working, you know, every night to every day. An adjustment I've done in my life too, so I I know yeah. all about that. Um, the other thing that we're really seeing, as you referenced, is uh, is around increased flexibility going forward. You know, just about every uh, business leader that I talk to says that they've got a significant portion of their employees either asking about or wanting uh, to, to capture some sort of hybrid working environment going forward. And I think that that's really for the best. You know, one of the things that the pandemic period taught us is that we can be quite productive in a variety of remote locations. It also taught us that it's not easy to do everything, you know, creativity, team building, culture building, that happens much easier when you can, can be in person. But I think, uh, you know, employees are going to say to their employers, you know, I, I want to do some of my work, maybe a day or two a week or something like that from home. I want to focus on writing. And, you know, in particular, in a place like Calgary, I think when we have a few of our big snow dumps this winter, yep. we're going to see a lot fewer cars on the road, as people say, you know, and it just doesn't make sense for me to burn hours and hours each way to and from work. I'm just going to work a little each day. What have you been hearing uh, on the street uh, in terms of downtown businesses uh, uh, maybe requiring their uh, employees to have vaccinations before coming into the office? Yeah, vaccinations are the topic of the day, absolutely. And uh, requirements around them have been uh, discussed at just about every business that I've talked to. So here's what, what, what I'm sort of seeing and hearing is that the, the vast majority of companies say that their employees are, are quite ready to share with them their vaccination status and, uh, and just kind of volunteer it, and that they're seeing kind of really high levels of vaccination already among their employees. And that's kind of to be expected, particularly folks in their core working years, you know, many of them in professional jobs. This is a, this is a population that you expect to have high vaccination status. 
And there are relatively few uh, folks that I've heard who are saying, absolutely, it's a requirement for your employment that you're vaccinated here. That's, that's relatively rare, but what we're seeing a lot of is, uh, is businesses saying that they're gonna require either vaccination or a recent a negative test for certain types of activities. Uh, you know, that might be going to a work site, a work camp, going to the office, or especially kind of going to client sites. And so I think what's, what's gonna take place is that the, the relatively few remaining folks who uh, you know, want to be working but are uh, choosing to be unvaccinated are going to find that they have a more difficult time. There's going to be more activities that they're not going to be able to do, or they're going to have to commit to what's probably going to be a pretty expensive regime of, of regular rapid testing. Yeah. Well, Scott, we've seen uh, the number of cases uh, of COVID uh, rising quite, uh, quite uh, extensively here in the last two months. Um, uh, you know, we're over 11,000 uh, active cases, we're uh, 400 plus now hospitalizations, nearing 100 ICU. Edmonton uh, yesterday seemed to be the first to jump on board. Edmonton uh, uh, had mandated uh, masks again for indoor uh, spaces. And uh, I'm wondering what you're hearing. Do you think we're going to get to that point as well that Calgary will follow suit? Well, the, Mario, the really good news is that Alberta actually has quite strong vaccination rates. You know, we've got uh, around 70% of the population, the eligible population, as of today, fully vaccinated, which is a great number. And then about 77% yeah, plus uh, with at least one dose. And so, and that's a really strong indication that we're probably going to get a second dose if you do get the first dose. So I think there's a, a strong likelihood that we're going to be in that 70 to 80% fully vaccinated. But you're right, the case numbers have been going up. And I think that that is causing some additional costs. And, you know, businesses, employers generally are having a, a second look at their return to office plans, at, at, their, at their sort of protocols. And I think that those higher case numbers, even though the, the vaccines mean that those higher case numbers are increasingly separated from serious outcomes, uh, the higher case numbers have got people being a little bit more cautious. And so um, I, I certainly think that we will likely see more locations uh, reintroducing some safety measures, things like masks. You know, as you said, we saw that happening in Edmonton. I, I, I don't know if we'll see that happening in Calgary, but I certainly know of some work sites that are continuing to uh, yeah. require masking. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see other employers or other municipalities uh, sort of saying out of an abundance of caution, we're going to reintroduce some of these measures. What about um, the domino effect it has, uh, and the pandemic has had, and also uh, you know, the last, whatever, five, seven years, right, with the oil patch uh, decline and and how uh, that's really hit the downtown core of Calgary hard in terms of office and office space. We know that, you know, it's hovering and has been hovering around a 30% vacancy for quite some time. The fact that we're going to have people coming back in, in September has is, is got to be good news for a lot of those restaurants and retailers uh, in the core. Absolutely. You know, that's a powerful motivator, actually, from the executives that I've talked to, you know, when they're thinking about re-entering the workplace and bringing their staff back to the office, one of the things that's motivating them is thinking about those small businesses that rely on the, the large populations in the office towers to, uh, to survive, you know, the restaurants, the coffee shops, the, the little print store nearby, or things like that. Uh, all of those benefit from a really vibrant downtown. And I think, um, you know, the vast majority of the remaining unemployment, uh, sort of pre-COVID unemployment that we have in Alberta uh, is, is related to the hospitality sector or the experience sector, you know, those restaurants or, yeah. or accommodation places. So I think that there's a, a great opportunity as we sort of see the last uh, tranche, big tranche of folks heading back to the office that some of those could do better. But I mean, you laid out the case there, the, the downtown of, of Calgary in particular, uh, but downtowns across Alberta are, are challenged, but in Calgary in particular, it, it's really gonna be an ongoing challenge and a yeah. few businesses returning to the office is not gonna solve it. You know, hovering at around 30% vacancy rates. Um, at, you know, I think there's a shadow vacancy rate that's even a little bit higher than that uh, from people that have space rented but aren't using it. And, uh, and one thing that's been clear, right, you know, with the, with the work from home nature of the pandemic is that many businesses are saying, we might not need as much space in the future as we thought we were going to. And so that's another downward pressure on, uh, on office absorption. You, you mentioned the word vibrant, and I, I was curious about that because the times that I have gone downtown 
you know, uh, in the last, say, a year or so, uh, man, it, it, it's like a ghost town, right? And it, and there's just, it's so quiet. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think we, we really need to get that vibrancy back downtown, don't we? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I don't know if you can see in the background, but I'm working from downtown Calgary today and, uh, and I walk around the, the plus 15s to grab lunch and things like that. I can tell you that the, the action and the energy is coming back a bit. Uh, you know, in the, in the last couple of months, we've had not only the impact of the pandemic and work from home, but also just uh, summertime in Alberta and a beautiful Alberta summer has a way of meaning that there's fewer people walking around downtown Calgary. I, I, you know, I see some of that coming back already. Uh, but as I said, I think that that's one of the other reasons why, in, in, you know, in a, in a safe and thoughtful way, large businesses are saying it's time that we get our employees back in the office because it's, it's just more positive for the downtown community, the downtown small businesses, and sort of the, the, the vibrancy uh, overall of, of downtowns. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks very much uh, for joining us today, Scott. Thank you, Mario. Okay, that was Scott Crockett, Vice President of Communications and External Relations with the Business Council of Alberta. This has been Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on YYC Business, brought to you today by Megapix Media. Thanks for joining us.